this is Dr. K from iMedical School, and today we're going to do a question and answer session. I've been asking you guys to give me questions that you have that I can answer. And Haldauda, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, asked, can you go over the different segments of an EKG, specifically the ST segment, PQ segment, and what this means in regards to depolarization, resting, and repolarization phases. So let's talk about that now. So here is the basic deflections we see on an EKG. We have the P wave, the QRS complex, as well as the T wave. The P wave represents atrial depolarization. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. And the T wave represents ventricular repolarization. In addition to those deflections, we also have intervals and segments. A segment is the time between deflections on an EKG while an interval includes the waves themselves. The intervals and segments that we will discuss are the PR interval, the PR segment, the QT interval, and the ST segment. So let's first talk about the PR interval and the PR segment. The PR interval includes from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. The P wave, like I talked about before, represents atrial depolarization. And the PR interval represents the atrial depolarization time plus the time that the depolarization takes to travel from the atria to the ventricles via the AV node. A normal PR interval ranges from 0.12 to 0.22 seconds. It is really important to note the interval on an EKG because a lengthening or shortening of this interval can indicate certain pathology. If the PR interval is longer than normal, this indicates there's some delay in conduction from the atria to the ventricles, indicating that it's likely at the AV node. Consider either a first degree AV block or a second degree Mobitz 1 block. Remember, in these two blocks, we have PR lengthening. In Mobitz 2 blocks, there is no PR interval lengthening. You just have a QRS drop. Now, if the PR interval is shorter than normal, you want to consider other etiologies, such as one, is there a dyssynchrony between atria and ventricle, indicating a third degree heart block? Is this a premature atrial complex? Or is there some form of AVNRT occurring? You need to look at the rest of the EKG to figure out why someone has a shorter PR interval. Now, let's take a look at the ST segment. Remember, the ST segment ranges from the end of the QRS complex to the beginning of the T wave. The ST segment represents the time from the end of ventricular depolarization to the start of ventricular repolarization. I consider it the most important segment on the EKG just because it indicates severe pathology if it's abnormal. An elevation of the ST segment, that means a rise from baseline, can indicate either pericarditis, if there's diffuse ST segments with PR de segment depression, versus an acute heart attack. In addition, depression of the ST segment can indicate subendocardial ischemia meaning that the patient likely has significant coronary artery disease and needs to be further worked up. That is why it's always important to identify the ST segment on an EKG and see if it's abnormal or normal. Now let's look at the QT interval. The QT interval ranges from the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. It represents the time from the beginning of ventricular depolarization to the end of ventricular repolarization. Note that the QT interval depends on the heart rate. So if something is driving your heart to beat very fast, the time from the beginning of depolarization to the end of repolarization of the ventricle has to shorten to maintain a fast heart rate. So we need to correct the QT interval for heart rate. We do this by calculating the QTC, or corrected QT interval. The QTC is calculated by the QT interval divided by the square root of the RR interval. A normal QTC is less than 440 milliseconds. So why is QTC important? The QTC lets us determine if a patient is at higher risk 
for arrhythmias. So a prolonged QTC indicates that a patient is prone to arrhythmias. This includes fatal arrhythmias. When you identify a patient with a prolonged QTC, it's important for several reasons. One, you must know that they need to have optimized electrolytes while they're an inpatient. Two, you must avoid medications that will prolong their QTC and further promote arrhythmias. And three, it is important to understand why their QTC is prolonged. All right, so that's our brief review over the segments and intervals. If you like this video, give it a like. If you have a comment, place a comment down below or suggestions for other topics or just questions in general. And if you like the videos I've been doing, subscribe to my channel. You can check out other videos or articles at medpulse.org. This is Dr. K from My Medical School, and I'll see you next.